Welcome to the Biotechnology Lecture Series. This is the 10th lecture on Cell Biology. In this lecture, we will cover introduction, history, composition, structure, functions, and models of cell membrane with some research questions at the end. And let's not forget to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss our next lecture. The cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane or plasma lemma, is a fundamental structure found in all living cells. It serves as a crucial barrier that separates the interior of the cell from its external environment. The cell membrane plays a vital role in maintaining cell integrity, regulating the transport of substances in and out of the cell, and facilitating cell communication. In the late 19th century, Scientists like Robert Remack and Hugo von Mohol proposed the existence of a distinct cell membrane based on microscopic observations. Fast forward to the early 20th century, the fluid mosaic model, introduced by S.J. Singer and G. Nicholson in 1972, transformed our understanding of the dynamic structure of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is primarily composed of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. The relative proportions of these components can vary slightly depending on the type of cell and its specific functions. In the cell membrane, lipids, primarily phospholipids and cholesterol, are crucial components. Phospholipids, the most abundant lipids, form a bilayer, providing the membrane's basic structure. Cholesterol molecules are scattered within this bilayer, regulating its fluidity and stability. Proteins in the cell membrane fall into two categories, integral and peripheral. Integral proteins are embedded within the lipid bilayer and can traverse the entire membrane, facilitating functions like transport and cell signaling. On the other hand, peripheral proteins are situated on the membrane surface, often attached to integral proteins, or the lipid bilayer, playing roles in cell signaling and providing structural support. Carbohydrates are typically found on the extracellular surface of the cell membrane, either as glycoproteins or glycolipids. They are essential for cell recognition and adhesion. The structure of the cell membrane is elucidated through the fluid mosaic model a concept that portrays this crucial biological membrane as a highly dynamic and flexible structure. Central to this structure is the phospholipid bilayer, serving as the foundational component of the cell membrane. Comprising phospholipids arranged in a bilayer, the hydrophilic heads orient themselves outward, facing the surrounding aqueous environment, while the hydrophobic tails are positioned inward, shielded from water. Additionally, Integral and peripheral proteins are intricately dispersed within and on the surface of this phospholipid bilayer, contributing significantly to the membrane's functions. Integral proteins, for instance, can span the membrane, forming channels, receptors, or transporters. Alongside proteins, cholesterol molecules are interspersed within the phospholipid bilayer, providing stability and fine-tuning the fluidity of the membrane thus playing a vital role in maintaining its integrity and functionality. There are several functions of cell membrane. Let's discuss them one by one. One of the critical functions of the cell membrane is its role in selective permeability. This means that it acts as a regulator, controlling the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Essential molecules necessary for the cell's processes are permitted to enter, while waste products are allowed to exit, all while maintaining a carefully controlled internal environment. Another vital function of the cell membrane is in cell signaling and communication. Integral proteins embedded within the membrane act as receptors, facilitating the cell's ability to receive signals and communicate effectively with other cells. These signaling interactions are crucial for various cellular processes and are fundamental in coordinating activities within tissues and organisms. The third function of the cell membrane 
is facilitating cell adhesion and structure, thus contributing to cell shape and assisting in the formation of tissues and organs. And the fourth function involves certain membrane proteins participating in vital energy conversion processes like ATP synthesis within mitochondria and photosynthesis within chloroplasts, playing a crucial role in metabolic activities and meeting the cell's energy needs. There are several models that have been proposed to describe the structure and behavior of the cell membrane over time. Now let's dive into the first model, the fluid mosaic model. Imagine the cell membrane as a constantly shifting and flexible structure, like a mosaic made of tiny moving pieces. These moving pieces are proteins and lipids, always changing their positions within the bilayer. This model helps us understand how the membrane can adapt and be flexible, crucial for various cell functions. Next, we have the Singer-Nicholson model. This model is like a step forward in our understanding. It introduced the idea of integral and peripheral proteins within the membrane. Integral proteins are like anchors embedded within the lipid bilayer, sometimes spanning it. Peripheral proteins, on the other hand, are more on the surface. Understanding these proteins and their interactions gives us a deeper insight into how the membrane is structured and how it works. Lastly, let's talk about the davson danieli model. Initially, this model imagined the cell membrane as a bit more rigid, with proteins forming a sort of outer coat on the lipid bilayer. However, as our knowledge grew, we realized this wasn't quite accurate. We found out that the membrane is much more dynamic and flexible than initially thought, leading us to adopt the fluid mosaic model we discussed earlier. So, this model taught us the importance of keeping our understanding up to date and accurate. Here are some questions related to the topic. Number one, how does the fluid mosaic model accurately depict the dynamic nature of the cell membrane and what components contribute to its flexibility and functionality? Number two, what historical models were proposed to explain the structure of the cell membrane and how did they evolve into the currently accepted fluid mosaic model? And number three, how do integral and peripheral proteins play distinct roles in the cell membrane, and how do their functions contribute to the selective permeability and overall functionality of the membrane? That's all from this lecture. See you in the next video for lecture number 11. And let's not forget to subscribe to this channel.